if you like this type of content I, I haven't seen a lot of Spanish videos so if you have friends or anything like that and, and you know you want to share that um, it's actually pretty cool having these it's it's calming the sound yeah. working with the hires um, until you get stung but before that we're trying to get closer but they're swooping down on our heads <laughs> that old tree top to bottom We're gonna put them in nuke boxes. Hey y'all, remember that coin I was telling you about every beekeeper wants? That is beautiful right there, look at that. Y'all, we got a great video for you today. Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where I be beekeeping is a way of life. Today though, we're on a commercial yard. We're on a commercial queen rearing yard with Joel and Carlos. And Joel is gonna walk us through a lot of their queen rearing process in Spanish. And Carlos is gonna translate into English. I was talking to the guys earlier and Carlos said, you know, I don't see a whole lot of beekeeping videos in Spanish. I said, hey, <laughs> if y'all are up for it, we can make it happen. And so they did. And I appreciate the, the guys helping us here. And these guys are absolute masters and the sport or the art or whatever you want to call it of queen grafting and queen rearing and, and most all things commercial beekeeping so today you're going to get it's all it's all got english and spanish in it now on top of that i'm honored to say that they're using one of our queens to graft up but she made the cut and went to work on a commercial yard and i'm going to let joel and carlos tell you all about why they chose her and how many grafts they've gotten off her this is going to be blow most of your minds it's incredible uh, let's get into this and y'all stick around for Spanish and English beekeeping. Oh, esta reina es bastante calmada, bastante, you know, like calm down, like gentle. Uh -huh. So we went, we try, estamos tratando de sacar nueva sangre de ella para cambiar la sangre de toda la compañía porque este momento ya están muy agresivas porque hemos combinado la sangre de la misma de la misma entonces ya entro en endogamia endogamia es cuando siempre estás tralarvando de la misma y no tienes nueva sangre bueno. so pretty much the, this queen is actually very gentle and the bee that it breeds is very very gentle as you can see they're not flying around they're not trying to sting us they're not aggressive and at this time in the company we're trying to refresh the plot uh, and try to breed new new bees because currently the bees that we have are getting a little aggressive and uh, we're just trying to freshen that up um, when you breed the same bee it tends to get more aggressive over time right it's, it's not one day to another but over time it gets more aggressive so what we're trying to do is to cleanse a little bit of that aggressiveness and try to put some of this beautiful blood and, and try to make her more docile yeah. Look at that, she's not really aggressive, nothing, not at all. You can take your bee coat out and then... Yeah, right now you're you're recording without mm -hmm. without any protection. Yeah, me and Darren are staying here with nothing on. I do have a backup on, because I can't run case. all that fast. And we, <laughs> we were, you got a mosquito on your head. Yep. Yeah. We were uh, um, out on the golf cart a while ago trying to outrun these others, and that golf cart's not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> There's a queen. Yeah, there she is. Look, we mark her. Nosotros marcamos a ella para encontrarla un poco más fácil. Yeah, so when you're working with bees and you're breeding them, what you want to do is actually mark them. So this is going to make it a lot easier for you to follow up and make sure that you 
are able to find her, make sure you don't hurt her. I don't know if you noticed the way he pulled the... the yeah, you gotta pull the like frame really, out. really, really, really easy and gentle the frame, pull it out. Yeah, and yeah. as you can see, he's not wearing the hood or anything, so he's, yeah. he's good. They're not jumping on us. I don't want to open one of the other boxes for now. And, no, and no. these guys, these guys uh, work bees all day. It's not that we're any tougher or brave, braver, but they don't want to get stunk all day, every day. And I don't mind taking a few for the team, but we're oh in a spot right now where they're not one. attacking us too bad. He's perfect graft right now. <laughs> you see the shininess in that? I do. It is perfect for grafting. Perfect grafting right now. Look at this, a lot of juicy. <laughs> And that is they are like, floating. We just checked it at noon and they weren't ready, but five hours, five hours that's all it takes when yep. you're in the grafting. Uh -huh. They go are really nice right say, now. Say, say it in Spanish, Joe. Oh, ellas son. So, mire como la ves aquí. En cinco horas, ellas están lindas. Probablemente esta mañana nosotros las revisamos y ellas no estaban listas para traslarbar. Pero cinco horas después, ellas ya están listas. ¿Por qué? Porque ellas trabajan cuando el tiemp la temperatura está un poco más caliente y ellas tienen bastante alimento, ellas trabajan más rápido. Ellas alimentan más rápido la larva, entonces ya está lista para traslarvar. Puedes ver ahí que ellas están flotando en la, Royal, en, en la jalea real. En la jalea real. Ya están, ya están ellas listas para traslarbar. Es más fácil porque solo la agarra y la escupira, la, 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 la sacan. La sacas así, en la cucharea, escupira, la, you know, la sacas así y es más fácil. Entonces ya están listas para traslarbar. All those shit, all those sales are shining. And that's yeah. a great, that's a great tip because you want to keep into account the temperature at all times okay like maybe you checked it in the morning but they were not ready which is the case right but it has been a warm day and it, it got really hot at some point so checking them out actually will help you uh, to continue with the process right and so they don't overdo that stage and then you lose that frame right right mm -hmm. well, there she is just she's happy as a lark just yeah. hanging out chilling and they're not jumping at us. At no, all. no, not at all. If she got, she ya tiene abejas con ella que la protejan y están alimentando la ella. Ella no salta a ningún lado. Está tranquila y no mueve a otro lado. La puedes dejar ahí y ya no no va a ningún lado. So yeah, as long as you have, uh, the, as as long as the queen has bees around her, they are feeding her, and everything is going smooth. You don't hit the frame. You don't want to be aggressive towards them either. You don't want to mess with them she's just gonna stay there you don't have to be concerned about you know keeping an eye on her which is pretty cool joel explain to everybody the queen excluders and everything in this box how this box is built okay este esta es un breeder este es para la progenitora lo que consiste de esto es pone tienes que poner dos panales alrededor de ella uno de miel completamente lleno de miel El otro es con cría, cría forrada o cría abierta y el, el de en medio, completamente aquí en medio, lo tienes que poner, donde está ella lo tienes que poner vacío. ¿Para qué? Esto trata de que ella, forzarla a ella para que ella ponga en el panal que le está poniendo vacío. Para en 3, 4, en 5 días, ya ella ponga en la noche. Cuando se lo pones y en cuatro o cinco días es ya está listo para traslarvar. Depende de la temperatura. Porque si está muy caliente, en cinco días está, está listo. Cuatro días, cinco so, días. Like you said, depends on the temperature. Yeah, that's right. I don't speak to Spanish, but I know a few things. <laughs> but if it, pero si es demasiado frío, entonces está listo como en seis, siete días. Y esto consiste en que tú pones aquí el excluidor en los lados. ¿Para qué? Solo la abeja pueda traspasar, ir a trabajar, alimentar, pero como dejas aquí este lado de aquí, ella está encerrada aquí completamente, no tiene entrada, solo a los lados, donde pueden salir a trabajar las, las obreras. Entonces aquí ellas la alimentan, van a trabajar, llenan aquí, aquí pones cría, cría, o polen aquí y pones aquí miel. 
¿Para qué? Para que esté renovando la población. Cuando encuentras uno lleno aquí, lo cruzas aquí. Y para que siempre mantenga la población, no puedes quitarle totalmente, o totalmente la cría o llevártela. La, pone, la mueves a un lado para que siempre esté robando, renovando la población y puedan alimentar las larvas y puedan alimentar a la reina. Uh, this is designed for you to breed them, right? And the idea is it, it consists in a very simple cycle. Pretty much this is a, an excluder, excluder, sorry. And what it does, it prevents uh, the queen from going uh, to either side, right? Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is control where she lays eggs. So right. pretty much here you're gonna have pollen or honey, same way here. Honey. And here you want to have brood or you want to have, uh, definitely you want to have uh, an empty frame in the middle. So what this does is that it forces the queen to actually lay eggs on, on that frame. And it helps you to control that growth to be able to uh, carry on with the process. Now, once you have the queen set there, then it takes about five days, four days, depending on the weather, depending mm -hmm. on if it's too warm or if, if, if it's cold, then it might take six to seven days uh, for it to actually Drafted. be draftable. Mm -hmm. And um, as you can see from out here, what he was showing, it actually goes all the way down uh, to block that passage. But the bees, they are still able to go back and forth. You always want to keep the brood so the population doesn't go down. Once you have the frame here, you use for uh, drafting? Uh -huh. drafting. Grafting. 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 And once you actually use that uh, frame, what you can do is you move it outside and then uh, you put another empty one and that way you keep having that cycle. Okay. So are you, are you having to move brood out of other boxes to support this one? Yep. You move the no, no, no. No, but typically, you, you don't technically you don't put the no, technically no pone cría. Cría de otra colmena para soportarla a ella. Ella tenés que soportarla con lo mismo que le sacas y lo pones a por eso lo pones al lado para que ella misma esté sustentando su población. So the idea, the idea is that it recycles. You don't have to bring brood from another hive. What it does is once you use for grafting, then you move that frame, it will carry on with the process, it will repopulate the, the hive, and you don't have to bring brood from another hive. Mm -hmm. What we actually want to do is keep that this hive as clear as possible. We don't want her um, exchanging blood, if you want to say it that way, mm -hmm. with, with other hives that we have right now so we can keep it as pure as possible and then during the grafting process we're going to try to repopulate other hives and and try to make sure that they carry on uh with that fresh blood if you want to call that, it that, that way. line or that genetic yeah yeah, yeah. with that genetic this one this is a funny fact that we were talking about uh earlier this one's a little bit of a rebel she somehow gets across and and <laughs> sometimes you get it's a hard to control her <laughs> yeah, she's, she's the rebel one, but as you she's can see, sticky. she's very docile. So it's difficult to control her. She can get away with that. She <laughs> yeah. cruza, no sé por dónde, no sé cómo, pero cruza al otro lado. A veces no quiere poner en el panal que le he puesto, pero eso consiste por qué? Porque tenemos mucha miel al otro lado. <coughs> Perdón. Y ella va a las las obreras van a robar miel. Entonces no le dan tiempo que ella ponga. Entonces ellas llenan muy rápido el panal vacío que le ponemos. Entonces ella no pone. Ella no tiene espacio, entonces ella cruza al otro lado. And those are things you want to keep in mind. So what he was talking about <laughs> is that uh, since we have a bunch of hives here and we're working right now, we're splitting and all that, it, it, it means that there's a lot of honey involved in the surroundings, right? So what the bees do, the, the workers, they go ahead and pillage the honey and they fill out that frame that we put empty mm -hmm. and they fill it up with honey. So they don't give her enough room or enough time, time to lay time, eggs to, to rather than, eggs. yeah. So they pack it up with honey and, and that's why you gotta constantly be keeping an eye on them. And, and always beekeeping is a lot about being aware of your surroundings like what are the conditions is fluoration fine 
are there uh, other hives that are somehow affecting this one uh, particularly and then keeping an eye on those and reacting accordingly awesome guys i appreciate it thanks for the lesson there's a whole lot more i could ask but we'd be out here all day long <laughs> yeah, you know, we can save it for another video we gotta do something else yeah big swarm yeah <laughs> they got 50 pound swarm <laughs> yeah yeah maybe more I'm, 200 pounds i'm dressed appropriately <laughs> it's gonna be fun for you <laughs> yeah i did bring some long pants and my bee jacket so if i stick around for what they're about to do there's no way i could be around that unsuited because just driving by it man they were trying to get in our hair <laughs> I'm like i'm helping darren press the gas on that little golf cart I'm like go 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 look at how gentle her and then bees, they're mira como están calmadas sus abejas, sus su trabajadoras. Yeah. For a swarm hive. Yeah. Yeah. So if you didn't see the video before about this queen, this was a feral colony that I took. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't even remember where I took her from, but I've had her for a couple of years now. This is, or I've had her since last year sometime anyway. So I've had her for one year, but she's just so gentle and so easy to work with that i brought her up here so darren and them can make some dra graphs trash i got me saying drafts <laughs> <laughs> so darren can make some grass off of it and maybe incorporate some of these genetics into their colonies and and cool them down a little bit make them easier to work she was still uh real productive on brood and honey production so i think you'll get some nice bees out of it i hope something i gotta say i gotta say something tengo que decir algo Nosotros todo el tiempo marcamos la fecha en que le, le metemos o le ponemos el panal vacío. Porque ya sabes, yo la marco esta del 3.31. Ya sabes que en probablemente en 5 días, el 4 de abril, ya está lista para traslarvar. Porque si que porque toma cinco días para que la larva esté lista para tra para que el huevo cuando ella lo ponga ya cambie turn, uh, cambie a larva y ya está lista en cinco días a traslarvar. So this is a little bit of a pro tip uh, for those that are new into this. Um, something that we particularly do is that we actually track on the uh, on the lid. We actually track when we put that empty frame. So the idea is that, for example, here you, you put a frame on the 28th, so then you know that it might take up to five days, around five days, for that frame to be ready for, for you to, to graft. And that helps you keep a control on that. You can use your calendar, you can use whatever tools you want, but this, since we often work with them and we're constantly checking on them and, and we're always on that, then this is how we have it. And, um, you have a bee on your eye. <laughs> I know, that's why oh, I was really? the camera yeah. in close. I don't, I don't even know that. <laughs> so that's how gentle they are. Yeah. She's Look not even that. stinging him. Yeah. No. She's yeah. like a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> a and butterfly. this is how many times we've grafted from it. Yep. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Every time you actually uh, graft from it, then you want to mark it out. So you keep control of that. And every time is probably a thousand grafts thousand cells thousand cells thousand cells so we're not so right there she's already probably produced eight thousand cells dude at least nice mm -hmm. so we're putting them out there and y'all y'all graft a ton of cells anyway yeah. how many how many graphs are you doing a day uh 1440 a day 1440 so when we do, when we set it up like 12 high but if we, we set it up 14 high that's mean like and there's 120 cells per hive. Per hive, that's mean like 1,600 or something, so, maybe more. Yeah. Mm. yeah. We're putting them out there. She's laying it up, man. She's yeah. laying. She's doing her yep. thing. I'm proud she's of her. <laughs> she's doing good. And this one. I'm proud of you, baby. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and this one's named Randy Queen. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we're in R because it's Randy Queen. <laughs> and look at the frame. <laughs> Yep, these ones are random. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And I take the I take other frame from here and put it in a new in a new hive to maybe they get make maybe they can raise they can start raise queens by the ants. 
so we got one queen from her and we can use for grafting later yeah 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 definitely because i don't know how old she is i know i've had her since at least the middle of last season so she's at so she's at least she's probably two years old if i had to guess she looks good i mean she's yeah. still got the shininess to her yep and her wings aren't even frayed or nothing they no. look good wow so we'll see how she runs and look at how, how, many, guys. how many grafting have we have here yeah oh somebody left a nice camera over there I like to have that <laughs> <laughs> So that was it guys i hope y'all enjoyed the, the spanish video and uh now you know where this beautiful queen went we're putting her to good use and if you need queens don't call darren because he's not going to ship you any <laughs> 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 okay we we uh what do you call it we um trademarked her or something what do we do we put a stamp, <laughs> we put a stamp on her yeah. so anybody gets any of these queens will know it no, I don't know. Do you sell queens? Not this year. No. See, he no. don't want to get rid of her either. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's our baby. Joel, right. Carlos, appreciate it, guys. Pleasure. You're welcome. You want to say hello to anybody? <clears throat> Hola. You want to say hello to the Border Patrol? Hello, Border Patrol. <laughs> I would just say stop holding me in every post because of my passport. Like, come on, man. Come on. And so here's the story, funny story. I was actually born in Russia, so my passport says that I was born in Russia. Yeah. So every time when I was coming, uh, when I went to the embassy to get the, the visa from Nicaragua, yeah. half an hour asking me what were you doing in Russia, and I was like nothing, man. I was being carrying around. I was I was a bulb, you know. I was just there, and people was carrying me. My mother. So <laughs> yeah, funny story. And when I came in the airport again have an hour went to get the social security number again have an hour my partner he doesn't speak any english and he was in bam, 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 five minutes out and i was sitting there for half an hour doing some interrogation so i'm sorry <laughs> the american people i was it's not my fault i was born there I'm I'm, I'm I'm clean i'm clean i'm not spying on anyone i'm just getting stuck for fun he's over here discovering our biggest beekeeping secrets yeah <laughs> there's no secrets in beekeeping that, that's that, for sure that's going for the kgb for sure <laughs> Jeez. i hope you're not going back home anytime soon i have to blur your face <laughs> no, 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 no. I, got the, I got the bill mm -hmm. so these guys were gracious enough to help us out with a spanish speaking video if you like it uh, and, and we get enough interaction off this video we'll come out here and do some more with them if they're up for it and if if not this will be the last Spanish video that's it <laughs> adios they're sending me to Siberia they're sending me to Siberia get a like okay guys bye adios amigos adios amigos <laughs> this is a six foot tall cluster of bees are about 510 I'd say to there touching the ground I don't know I'm not even gonna guess the weight but you can kind of get an idea how many bees that is I don't know how much leaves are up in there but there's a lot of bees I'm fixing to cut some limbs it looks like mm -hmm.